Making materials for the source engine is a pretty simple task for any strong-willed, logical man. This video will not show you how to make image textures for brushes or meshes, but will show how to go about using them for material files. So prepare them beforehand. If you want to learn how to do so, there are plenty of other guides on texture creation out there that are just one Google search away. Take a gander. You can find timestamps in the description to fast forward to parts you have limited knowledge on. For this, you will only need VTF edit but you will certainly want a photo editing software if you're choosing, as well as GCF scapes, so you may look through other materials included in your game for reference. I will provide some links in the description. I'd also recommend installing SageSum, as it's quite useful for previewing common image texture formats such as targets and also visualizes alpha channels. There are two file formats we'll be creating and working with today, VTFs and VMTs. VTF is a texture format which stores compressed image data as well as other meta information. VMTs are material files which are essentially text documents that contain shader parameters and are also what most people muck up. I'll be making materials for a prop in this video, however this general workflow is the same for most materials. Our first step will be to collect our textures. There are two basic types of textures, diffuse maps and normal maps. Diffuse maps define the base color of our mesh while normal maps include height information and add detail. Some of these maps will contain an alpha channel, which is essentially a black and white image contained within the texture. In diffuse maps, these are typically used to create emissive or transparent materials. In normal maps, these are used for specular mapping, determining how shiny your material is. I created the texture for this prop using Substance Painter. To begin, move your textures without any alpha channels into a new folder dedicated to VTF conversion. I like to give it an input and output folder as well. We can be sure a texture does not contain an alpha channel using a photo editor by checking the channels tab or by looking for transparency in the image viewer if you have Sage Thumbs installed. In VTF edit, we'll go under tools and convert folder. Set up your input and output folders. Next, make sure that to VTF is checked and that the text box beside it has the same file extension as your textures. Go under options. Make sure the normal and alpha format is set to DXT1. This is the most common format and stores data neatly and is well suited to most tasks. If image quality is of utmost importance, you may use the RGB888 normal format. Keep in mind, however, that this can increase texture sizes well over 8 times that of DXT1 and more often than not has very negligible of results. There's a link in the description to an article that explains the technical aspects of these data formats. You should usually make sure that generate and mint maps is ticked. This can both improve performances and also increase texture quality at distances. The default options work just fine. Under advanced, you should make sure version 7.5 is selected. If later on you suffer issues in older games, you should go back and change it to 7.4. Make sure DXT compression is set to high for smaller file sizes. Next, go ahead and hit OK, then hit Convert. Your VTS will then be generated in an output folder. We can then move our textures from the input folder and replace them with the textures that contain our alpha channels. Do the same process, but this time be sure to select DXT5 for the alpha format, otherwise the alpha channels will be lost. I am then going to rename my textures for organization and legibility, giving diffuse textures the suffix underscore diff and the normals underscore norm, while keeping it undercased. Now that our textures are set up, we can go by the material creation process. For this tutorial, I've created several base materials that can be used for most purposes, which is included in the description below. These base materials also include helpful descriptions of each parameter. If at any point should you get confused about what a parameter shader entails in this next section, I would highly recommend that you look it up on the Val Developer Wiki, as there is a lot of vital information on that site that will help you in your endeavors. For this, we'll be using our base model VMT. I've created comments on each of the parameters so you know what they do. Copy base model.vmt in your model's material directory shown in your QC. For my model, it's under props. Rename it to match your model's material name and then move your textures into the same folder to keep organization. We are first going to set up our texture directories. Change these to the corresponding texture names. I'm then going to remove any parameters I will not be using. Be sure to remove the whole line to avoid syntax errors. Next we should open our model in Half-Life Model Viewer. If it says material texture was not found under the model tab then you did not set up your directories correctly. Go back and try again. I'm then going to fine tune my settings. I'll change one value, save the VMT with Control S, and then refresh the model with the F5 button to see the changes. Read through your parameters and change them to your liking. The process is the same for creating brush textures, however you will need to make a map that uses the material and be in game to preview it. I recommend you temporarily change to borderless windowed mode or windowed mode if you only have one monitor, and put the game off to the side. You will need to save the material file after addressing, and then your material will update automatically in-game. Brush materials do not need to be in any specific folder apart from the materials folder, but I do recommend that you sort them. 
For decals, you can preview them in the Hammer Editor as well as the game. In Hammer, you will need to remove the decal and replace it for an update to occur. You should now be qualified on making any kind of material for your mods. If you still have problems after watching this, read up on your issues online and attempt to solve it for yourself. Remember that modding is very much a Google text-based adventure game. If you can't search properly, you'll probably go bonkers nuts and rage quit. If you cannot figure out the issue yourself, then post below and I'll help you where I can. Have fun type tapping away. Thank <laughs> you.